Um, a few minutes uh, after 3 a.m. on October 6, 2015, I woke up uh, from a phone ringing, and it was, uh, it was from our DPA. Uh, and that moment, uh, you know that it's, it's not a drill, and, and something bad has happened. And the DPA told me that one of, our, one of the vessels that we manage uh, collided in a laden condition with another vessel outside of Zeebrugge. And the other vessel was sinking. So in 10 to 15 minutes, I was, I was, I was in a taxi rushing towards the office. And at this stage, the information is, is quite limited and you don't know the extent of the damage. Uh, you don't know the amount of injuries. So I, I kept thinking about the worst case scenario. Uh, ultimately, what if we found someone dead? This was the damage of our vessel. Um, it's quite a significant damage uh, to the owners, financially, commercially. Um, also, the other vessel that, that we collided uh, eventually sank. A lot of damage to the charterers uh, from a business interruption point of view, as you can imagine. Damage to the underwriters, damage to the financial uh, players to a certain extent. And, and also for the cargo owners, uh, it's, a, it's a big reputation damage. And, and also for us as an operator, the public image that we talked about this morning. But luckily, there was no casualties. So this is a vessel uh, in the yard for repairs. This is a couple of days after the incident. So the firefighting phase has, 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 has passed. And I had some time to reflect uh, on the incident. And I started thinking, why did this happen to me? And my initial conclusion was, it's just bad luck. Um, we were compliant with the rules and regulations. We had certifications in place. We went through uh, a number of uh, audits and inspections. So it must be bad luck. But I was completely wrong. And what I learned is that it's the culture. It's the safety culture of the organization which was missing. And if you can get this right, you can actually avoid this sort of major accidents from happening. Or as a minimum, you can reduce the, the probability uh, significantly. A few years uh, back, uh, I, met, um, I met this consultant, uh, a maritime consultant in Oslo called Propel. They're here today. Uh, there was one of the nominees uh, last night in, in the Safety uh, for Sea Initiative Award. And there was two things that uh, interested me at the time. Uh, one was that they were able to demonstrate uh, a strong correlation between a safety culture maturity of an organization versus the number of major accidents and serious incidents. So there's a strong direct correlation between the two. And also you can manage, you can measure uh, safety culture maturity level. And the second thing was about uh, trust and collaboration and, and how that can actually influence, uh, um, detect and manage errors and failures so that it doesn't escalate into a major accident. So in the beginning, I, wasn't, I was interested, but I wasn't too convinced. Um, but over time, the, the more I learned about it, the more I got into it, I really was convinced. And especially after this big accident that we faced, it really pushed me to, to, to invest in this. So we started a project called the Care Project, care coming from caring about people. And it was really essential for, for everyone in our organization to take part, engage in this project from me to the most junior person in the office, from the captains to the mess boy on all our vessels. Regardless of nationality, titles, ranks, everyone had to be engaged. And this was uh, an improvement project, uh, a, a service quality improvement, but it was always uh, centered around safety culture maturity. And we do, we do many things, but today, within the limited time, I just wanted to focus on, on this unique part, which is the behavior, uh, behavioral improvement. 
Um, these are eight uh, specific universal fundamental behaviors that has a strong, strong impact to safe, safety and safety culture maturity. I won't go through all of them, but later maybe we can, we can discuss if you're interested. But these are really, um, if, if, you, if you can implement these in an organization, it really uh, helps maturing the safety culture. So what we did was uh, we did, we did a, a trial with one of our vessels uh, about 15 months ago. And I have a few pictures uh, from, from that uh, experience. So basically what we do is a team of four people from the office visit the vessel for a week on a voyage. Uh, normally it's a superintendent, it's a project manager of this improvement project and, and our consultants. And what we do is we try to implement, we try, we try to mobilize these uh, behaviors on, on board. This is a, a kickoff meeting. Uh, you can see that uh, they are quite skeptical. What's going on? People from shore coming to the vessel. Is this another audit? The, the arms are folded and then you can see that they're quite skeptical. And then you ask leader, the, the captain, to, to talk the importance about this project because you need the buy-in from, from the captain. Uh, it's really important because it's the leader who sets the tone. And then you start practicing the behaviors on a one-to-one -one, uh, basis. Uh, on the right, you can see uh, our second officer, uh, senior uh, Ed, a Filipino guy, who is wearing a green band, which is uh, reflecting I speak up behavior. And what he's doing is he, he's uh, explaining uh, how his interpretation, what that means for him in, in, in his daily life. And then you go on and share it within the group. Again, everyone has to be involved, um, independent of rank. And, and you share uh, each behavior, what, what that means to you, and for the group, for the team. And eventually, you agree to, um, to an action plan um, per behavior and how you're going to, to follow up on a day-to-day -day basis. This is just an example of uh, one agreed action uh, from this team. This is rela related to uh, a behavior called I manage dilemmas. Um, and, and everyone uh, commits to, to this behavior, uh, to this agreed action by signing it. And, and then this will be follow up, followed up uh, from the day-to-day -day operations from the next day and mor morning meetings. What what happens through this process is that uh, you can see from this picture is that the, the, there's some changes that happens and people start to interact in a different way and it, it's quite a deeper emotion, uh, deeper bonding which, which starts to happen and the energy level of the group starts to increase. This is a picture that we took uh, the day before uh, the team uh, disembarked but you can see that there's, there's this energy level, this trust and collaboration which emerges and in my opinion uh, something like trust and collaboration is a feeling so you, you can't you can't instruct it you can't control it from outside it has to come from within um, but this is is something that that we are trying to to achieve which again has an impact on the safety culture maturity of the organization on the ship which uh, would reduce the risk of major accidents from happening so when I show this picture, people would, would say, okay, it looks nice, they're happy, but how do you make sure that this continues and make it sustainable? So now we, have, we are introducing a new, new tool. We're going to the second phase. Uh, we, we've done that first phase with all the vessels and we're going to the second phase for the follow-up visits. And we're now we're int introducing this uh, new tool, which is one of the tools for, to, uh, for the, uh, to keep the sustainability, the continuation. And it's a 3D uh, simulation tool, uh, so we're trying to use technology smartly. And uh, it's developed by uh, Propel and together with um, a gamification uh, platform uh, provider called Atenzi. And basically it's a role, role play game on board the ship, but it's linked to the behaviors and the human interaction that we talked about. So you are a second officer in this scenario. You're talking to the captain, who is quite an authoritative captain, which I think uh, many of you have uh, come across with before. 
And this is another uh, situation on the bridge where the captain is handing over the con to you and he's, he's putting a little bit of pressure, he's talking about the weather and, um, and then uh, quickly after, shortly after the weather really deteriorates and within a short time restriction you, you, have, to, you have to choose the right behaviours and the right way to interact with people within the, the limited options that you have. To, to get through, uh, to overcome this situation. And if you don't get it right, you crash the ship. Um, but it's okay, it's a, it's a safe environment uh, on a simulation. Again, this is, this is a very interesting tool, but it's still linked to the eight behaviors, the eight safety leadership behaviors that I talked about. Um, so it's actually practicing behaviors by failing. And that's, that's the only way you actually learn and it's also, it's a quite fun, uh, it's a game, you, it's a friendly competition with your colleagues. So making safety more fun is, is another thing that we're trying to do. Um, I'll try to, to show you uh, a short, short video, uh, seeing is believing. Yes. Problem, sir. Lots of fishing vessels port and starboard. Shallow water coming up. Poor visibility. We need help. Gas fiction. Gas fiction. This is... Yes. This better be important. Over. Well, of course it is, sir. I need help up here, and I would appreciate it if you didn't give me a hard time about it. Over. You what? Listen, when you come crying to me that you need help on a routine day shift, I'm supposed to give you a hard time. Huh? I'll come up, but if this is not important, I'll let your head on a stick. Over and out. I am here to save the day. I think there was some 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 uh, issues with the with the video, but I think you can get the feeling of, of what it looks like. Um, this is just uh, one of our colleagues uh, uh, practicing it in one of our vessels recently. Oh, you have two minutes. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I can just. Um, this is a very short one, but. Oh, no. <laughs> I even looked for it as well. Oh. <laughs> so he, he just had a big fire in the galley, but um, again. This is, uh, this is practicing failure uh, in, a, in a very safe environment. And um, it, it's really unique uh, that you can do it on a tablet. You don't have to, to take uh, the crews off the vessel to a training center to do this. And it's, it's really uh, on-site, uh, on-the-job training that you can do. So you can relate it uh, uh, very uh, closely to the day-to-day. -day. And, and you can also scale it, uh, which, is, which is another uh, benefit for this tool. So, um, just moving to the maritime industry, I think um, we talked this morning as well, but uh, after the ISM uh, was introduced, the industry has focused so much on controlling safety through regulations, systems and procedures, and controlling through compliance, uh, and policing it through uh, audits and, and inspections, which the concept is to do, do everything right in the first place to avoid failures from happening. But this is on the assumption that uh, all the procedures covers every single operation of our vessels, which is, which is very difficult. And also it's assuming that people don't make mistakes. But we do, and, and um, we, we all make mistakes, we all have bad days. The, the, the reality is that 45% um, of our seafarers admit that they break procedures on a regular basis. 
This is not canine seafarers, but this is uh, a data from 35,000 uh, people that, that Propel has on their database. So there's something missing uh, here, which is not working. People don't want to admit this, but uh, there is this blind spot, industry blind spot, that we, we, we should start to address. So the, the, the way we have been dealing with controlling sa safety through compliance, what, what it's doing, and, and the more stricter we go with this method, is that we're actually creating a cover-up culture on the vessels because there's no more incentive for, for the seafarers to, to tell the truth and report the, the, the issues that they, they have. So what they do is they cover up, they hide it under the carpet, um, and they, they try to get away through uh, the inspections on, on the surface. And that's creating uh, distrust. What, what we want is trust and uh, collaboration going back to, to the positive spiral um, where people feel safe to, to admit mistakes. And again, these uh, eight specific uh, safety leadership behaviors will really help uh, us in achieving this. So in, in, in K-Line, what we're trying to do is, is to create an environment, again, where, where people feel safe to, to fail, to, to make errors, uh, because uh, that's the only way that we can truly learn and, and move forward. So how can you create a culture of an organization where people feel safe, vulnerable, and that they can admit uh, errors? Um, the challenge by, by going this way is that uh, it doesn't sit nicely with the existing vetting regime. Um, and also, as a, as a ship manager, we can't do this on our own. So we need, we need the industry to, to, to make a movement together and, uh, and create this paradigm shift. So um, I hope uh, I, I was able to, to inspire a few of you, a few of you uh, for this movement, um, but more than happy to, to, to discuss later and in, in the evening. Thank you very much.